What's the most disturbing history you've learned about a house you found on the market? The lady next door to me died and wasn't found until she was more liquid than solid on her living room carpet. The family couldn't pay something back about back taxes or something, and the house went to HUD to auction. HUD paid for some cleanup, but not to replace the carpet, only steam clean it. So it finally sold and was talking to the guy who was flipping it. Before I could mention the death, he asked if the house had a water leak under the foundation. Because they ripped up the carpet and pad to put down the new floor, and it was really dirty and got all over them and their clothes. I told him what happened and how HUD went cheap on what to fix before the auction. He got green as a pea and then started emptying his stomach right there on his side of the fence. My grandma sells and rents houses in the Denver area. A few weeks ago, I had to help her evict a few college bros from one of her properties. This is a cottage-style home, no second floor, no basement. These guys literally dug a hole in the wooden floor and made a basement where they've been throwing trash away for the last year. Like, it's a living room with a TV, a couple of armchairs, and a giant hole in the ground filled with ice cream wrappers, pizza boxes, and cigarette butts. That seems like 1,000 times more effort than just taking the freaking garbage out. You know, taking out the garbage is a real pain in the butt. I'm going to perform back-breaking manual labor inside my house to avoid walking 20 feet to the street with a small bag of trash. <laughs> my parents were realtors and also flipped houses. When I was growing up, I used to help them a lot, usually by cleaning. When I was 12, I was helping with a house that was infested with roaches. I noticed the closets were smeared with crap and children's handprints. There were fingernail scratches on the insides of the doors as well. I asked my parents why this was the case. They told me the old tenants used to lock up their toddlers in the closets for days. How about the one I bought? A young person had drowned in the pool, and so far, every person that I've met asks me, you know what happened there, right? People are nosy. My mother passed away in my childhood home, which my dad eventually sold. Years later, my brother was picking up the youth group kids, and one teen got in and said, our house is haunted. Years ago, a lady died in there. My brother looked her dead in the eye and said, she was my mom, actually. The poor kid burst into tears immediately. My brother has such a horribly dry sense of humor. Ha! Huh. Got a good deal on an apartment because a lady was beaten to death next door. It was an old house converted into separate units. The narrator can't be the only one who would buy a house on the cheap because of a horrible crime there. Bring it on, ghosts! When I was looking for my last house, I went with my wife and realtor to look at several houses. We went to look at one house in particular because it didn't seem like the price they were asking could be real. A huge house sitting on tons of land without buildings and going for millions under market value. We got there and the realtor said, Oh, I should mention, a serial killer lived here and when he was put away, cops found 11 bodies on the property. I think owning this house would make me perpetually afraid of coming across a 12th body digging a vegetable patch or something. Yeah, but you have the perfect alibi for that dead body buried in the backyard. Yes, Mr. Police Officer, we brought this house from a serial killer. I guess they forgot one body. Whoopsie, don't know how my wife got there at all. The body's still decomposing, well that is really weird. Not that I was buying, but one that I was visiting. I went to visit my sister in California, and once I flew in, I wanted to shower. Well, I took a long enough shower that the mirror was all steamy when I got out, except one tiny dot in the middle of the mirror. My immediate thought process was, oh, weird, I guess if you draw on a mirror with Expo, it won't steam around it. So I went to go investigate, and upon looking right up to it, I realized it was a freaking camera lens. Well, I freaked out and ran out of her room and dressed and then went and told her. We went around the back and looked in the utility closet type thing that looked like it was in line with her room. Sure enough, the drywall had been cut away and repatched at some point. We cut it open, and while there was no camera, there was a little lens still stuck to the mirror. It's real freaky to think whoever was getting actually spied on, and if they ever actually knew. Ugh. I used to rent an apartment that was in a converted Victorian asylum. It was rumored to be haunted, but I never heard or saw anything whilst living there. When I met with the letting agent to hand the keys back at the property and for him to run through a final inspection, he asked if we had been happy there. I said something to the effect of, yes, but we were only moving as the landlord had set it up for sale. It became clear he was after some kind of ghost story as he explained that none of his colleagues liked going to any apartments in the building, because when taking photos to market one of them, the red eye detector kept triggering on his phone when no one was in the frame. The poor guy looked nervous as heck the whole time we were there. 
This is actually a really common glitch when taking photos in old buildings like this. It's caused by the light reflecting off the red eyes of the unquiet dead roaming the space between this world and the next. I photograph homes. It's normal. People die in homes. I photographed a few homes where the reason for sale was a recent self-deletion in the home. I photographed a new home where the builder ended things with himself in the garage just before the project was complete. The weirdest one was very creepy and suspicious. I photographed a billionaire's compound where the guy had had an absurd fascination with flesh. There were well over 50 heads mounted on walls from water buffalo to elephant. Five to ten large cats, all stuffed. Chandeliers made from the feathers of rare birds. Stools made from elephant feet and legs. They were hairy. Ugh. Paintings and abstract photos of oily skin, veiny muscles of humans and animals, among other things. I looked for his kill room, but I never found it. In general, I find billionaires don't behave like normal people, but this one was particularly weird. The flat opposite my house was occupied for a couple of years by a lovely young man. Long hair, gothic clothing, that might not be the right term for it, but frick it, I'm old. Super polite, if a bit reserved. He self-deleted in the flat one day. I only found out afterwards that he had had a liver transplant some years before and was worried his new liver was failing. I wish I could have helped him. I used to see him at my doctor's surgery. I had a new and sickly baby and was there a lot, and so was he. But we just said hi to each other, how are you, etc. I'm really sad for him. The flat has been occupied since by a succession of young couples. I've never said a word in case it troubles them, but I've tried harder since then to let them know I'm there if they ever need a friend. Being young and just starting out can be very lonely. I eventually heard that there was a secret passageway and stairs between bedrooms on the second and third floors that no one could now find, but it was apparently there, well hidden. I've been in a few where the realtor might have had a hard time selling it after it was fixed. One in particular where the entire family was taken off the mortal coil by the mother, who then set herself on fire in the back utility room. My aunt is a realtor and was selling a house that a lady owned, but it was renting out to her college-age son and a few of her friends. When they went to do the first walkthrough so my aunt could take pictures and such, it was apparent that the lady hadn't been in the house in ages. Every single room had a TV, a chair, a box of Kleenex, and a bottle of lotion. They were literally just spanking the mule with each other all over the house all the time. The lady was so embarrassed. When the sold sign went up on our last house, our neighbor came over and said, Now you're moving out, would you like to know about your house's history? It turned out the previous owner was a smack dealer, who allowed his customers to shoot up in the living room. That explains the brown, dried blood-colored arcs all over the walls when we stripped the wallpaper. He also used to hire out his old lady from an upstairs bedroom. Incidentally, our bedroom. Lovely. An old friend of mine brought a nice house in a quiet neighborhood. The place is beautiful and has a really nice deck out back with a hot tub. About three weeks after closing, he was cleaning out some previously owned junk in one of the closets and found an old DVD. It was a Bridget the Midget adult movie with a hot tub scene on the cover. His hot tub. It was epic. That's not so much creepy as it is a fun fact about where you live. I would for sure be showing that to everyone. After they'd used the hot tub, of course. <laughs> I've been doing this job a while now. The thing that scares me most is how often I find the locks reversed on bedrooms and basement doors. There is a lot of really crappy parents out there. I've actually done this, and it's because the little kids lock themselves in their rooms all the time. I'm big enough and resourceful enough to escape a room like this, but my kids are not. Once you've tried talking a three-year-old through turning the little knob a few times and they're freaking out, you flip the doorknob around to prevent it from happening in the future. This isn't so much disturbing as moderately amusing. Just days after closing on my house, a friend of mine who was helping me move in told me he had been in my house many times. Turns out his childhood babysitter had lived there. Then he tells me he just wants to show me something in the backyard and he leads me to the specific fence post on which he had drawn a wang as a child. I do wonder if he'd actually drawn it that day while I wasn't watching. Something similar happened to me. My grandmother lived in Chicago and needed to sell her house. She actually sold it to my husband's father when my husband was about three. They ended up moving to Hammond around the time he was 15, roughly about the time I met him. My husband and my mother grew up in the same house and didn't find out about it until four years ago. Small world. 
In Seattle, there was a house just up the block from my work. This was probably around 2007 or so. There was a zombie-themed rave and said house became the after-party. Most of the club kids knew each other and the ages ranged from 16 to 21. Unfortunately, they invited this loner dude who came over and started unloading a shotgun at around 6.30 to 7 in the morning. Kids dressed like zombies were pouring out of the house, jumping over fences, into the street, into the backyard. Nobody knew who was actually wounded and who wasn't because everyone looked effed up due to their costume. I think like six or seven people died. It's totally effed and has always stuck with me, probably because it was in my neighborhood which I lived and worked. Eventually, the house went up for sale and I always wondered how much the prospective buyers knew about what happened there. Houses in Seattle don't stay long on the market, so it had a lot of real estate agents and buyers coming and going. I also wondered if there was a little discount considering its history. You can submit your own stories to be featured here on the channel. The story submission link is in the description below. And if you want to listen to some vibey music in the background, check out Easy Mode, also linked below, and subscribe. I've been in the residential property management industry for 14 years and have managed and leased thousands of apartments and single-family houses. A historic building I used to lease apartments for was formerly an insane asylum, and prior to that was a hospital. The building itself is on the National Historical Registry. Thankfully, I never had a bad experience here except for one unsettling thing in a stairwell, but I did meet people over the years with stories. Anyway, certain things are required for historical landmarks and restoration tax credits in this particular city, so many of the apartments had to maintain certain features of the original design and architecture, like some old tile was still on the walls and floors. The thing that creeped me out was the basement. Even after more than 50 years on most days, you could catch a whiff of formaldehyde. Some days were more pungent and distinct than others. Of course, being the basement, it also had the addition of that musty basement smell. Since this was once a hospital, obviously it had a morgue. There are a handful of apartments in the basement and the original tile on the floor marked where the morgue originally started. In one of those apartments, there's a bedroom with incredibly spacious walk-in closets. If you haven't already figured it out, those two massive closets are the old body lockers with the original latches on the walls next to the entrance to the closets. I still for the life of me can't understand how anyone could live in that apartment because I wouldn't even go into that apartment by myself. These are my two most outrageous. I present the tales of the crazy old gynecologist and the adult toy aficionado. The first is short and sweet. A lady wants me to list her house. I go over and do the routine. As I go to the bedroom closet, she yells, Oh no, don't go in there, it's a horrible mess. It's a walk-in closet, but please don't go in there, it's such a mess and I'm embarrassed. She went on about it way too long for it to just be a mess. I leave it alone and that's that. House gets listed and two weeks later I offer to do an open house. The lady has started packing already because I already helped her find a new house. She leaves, I get the open house going, and a nice couple comes in. They go to the master bedroom and there's a wall of boxes in front of the closet. I explain that's a walk-in closet and last time I was there the lady said it was just filled to the brim with stuff. The wife wants to see the closet. The husband starts moving boxes. I ask him not to and he keeps going, if I'm going to buy a house, I want to see the whole thing. Well, he kind of had me there because I know they loved everything else about the house and the wife seemed super stoked about the kitchen and the master bath. The last box is moved and the door is opened. Inside is a 10 by 10 foot room, jam-packed, with phallic adult toys. They're each standing up on very nice custom shelving units with glass doors on the front. The glass doors also have numbers made from a home label maker unit. On the inside of the door is a large sheet of paper. Each number has a corresponding name of some guy. That's when we noticed two large boxes in the corner. Each box contained 36 unopened Cloner Johnson adult toy making kits. We stared in amazement for a while and then the husband just fricking lost it. It took a good 20 minutes for him to stop laughing or at least randomly bursting out in laughter. We put everything back the way it was and that was the end of me letting anyone check out the closet for the rest of the open house. That couple actually ended up buying the house, and since I know everyone will ask, there were 183 homemade statues of eggplants in the closet, and a few store-bought ones too. Now, the other story is the crazy old gynecologist. He asked me to come in and give him a price. He didn't want to sell, but wanted an official market analysis to present in court for his divorce. He offered me 500 bucks, so I was happy to come out and write it up for him. 
First off, I didn't know his profession. He never told me much later until he'd asked me to put doctor and his name on the paperwork, and I asked what kind of doctor he was. Anyway, I show up and the outside of the house looks great. It's super clean, very well maintained for a 70-year-old house, and looks pretty as a picture. I walk in and there's nothing but shelving units lining every single wall. Floor-to-ceiling shelving units. They're also in the middle of every room on the first floor. All of them are loaded with plastic storage bins that are labeled. They all seem to have pretty routine stuff. I'm thinking the guy is just a very organized hoarder. One has boxes and boxes of new pens. One is all rolls of tape. One big one is all toilet paper. As I get further into the house, the storage bins go from office supplies and toiletries to spoons. Just a giant clear storage tub full of random spoons. One is used paper clips. Used paper clips? He's differentiating between new and used ones. All right, whatever. That's when I notice every room has a TV and a surround sound system, and it's all set up on a shelving unit. This was back when flat screens were like 5,000 bucks and every room had one. Every room also had flying saucers on the ceiling, which he said were repeaters so he could change every TV to the same channel at the same time. I must admit, that was pretty cool. In any case, we go upstairs and it's a mess. The shelving units were all along the walls, but not in the middles of the rooms. And he's got a toaster in the middle of the bedroom floor with a bag of butternut bread next to it and a plate with a mushy stick of butter that looked like it was a week old. It had that sick yellow crystallized look to it. There were books all over the floor and it looked like he just sat on the floor reading and eating toast. Everything was sprawled out in a perfect circle around where he'd sit. That's when I noticed the clear storage tubs were much stranger up here. One entire rack was used tissues. Another several boxes were lubricants. A couple were speculums. Then I realized there were a lot of boxes of tissues, new and used, around his little toast and book circle. I took my measurements and couldn't help but look at some of the titles on his bookshelf. The two that stand out the most were Doing the Deed by Yourself and Show Me. I mostly remember Show Me because it was a very controversial book when I was a kid. It's basically a published book of borderline illegal material disguised as a life skills book. Everything else on the wall of books was also related to this kind of material. And we're not even close to done. I walked into this other bedroom and realized how dark it was. He had tinfoil taped in the windows to black out the room. It was filled with computers on a giant, custom-built horseshoe desk. If I recall, there were eight or nine screens wrapping around the room, in addition to two big flat-screen TVs. As I measured the room, I noticed more tissues and several boxes of new tissues. The screensavers were all showing slideshows of either undressed women or women in bathing suits. I say nothing and we move on. And here's where it gets weird. Oh, you thought we were past the weird stuff? Hold on to your hat. He takes me to the basement. It's a dungeon. Not some flashy, sanitized adult dungeon either. This was dark, dank, and musty. Two cages in two corners. Some kind of crucifixion cross with restraints, some weird table with restraints, a full wall of whips and chains and needles. One featured a paddle that had tacks sticking out of it. Swings for doing the deed of varying sorts hanging on the rafters. A wooden trough filled with what I hope was water. There was also a coffin, a rack, an iron maiden, and stocks. You know, like the medieval head and hands town square punishment device. Every wall, support, and piece of furniture had some kind of restraints on it, and he walked me through as if nothing was strange about this. And the coupe de gras, he shows me the utility room and then shows me his secret room, where the door was disguised as paneling on the back wall of the laundry room. Inside looked like a dungeon out of a freaking horror movie. A giant shelving unit filled with VHS tapes was along one wall. A computer desk with a computer and old-school video editing machines, I assume, boxes of his favorite tissues all over the editing station. Then there was a brass bed with restraints. There were no sheets on the bed, and it was horribly stained with God only knows what. Not blood, though. I probably would have called the cops if I saw blood on it. There was a mirror above the bed with a microphone dangling and two VHS cameras on tripods trained right on the bed. This guy acted like all of this was totally normal. He was like... Oh, and here's the secret room. I like to come down here to relax. It's just so quiet down here and it feels so safe because it's just hidden away from the rest of the house. If someone ever breaks in, I'd come down here and they'd never even know to look here. No mention whatsoever of the obvious use of this room. Screwing? Tickling the pickle? Murder? The unspeakable act? I have no freaking clue. 
I collected my 500 bucks and got the F out of there as fast as I could. No one believed me back at the office, and you know what? I don't believe them either. I wouldn't have believed myself if I'd heard it from someone else. I'm guessing he's dead now since he was, here's the kicker, probably about 75 to 80 years old, and this was about 15 years ago. His age and frailty, in addition to my morbid curiosity, was probably the only reason I didn't take off immediately. I remember thinking in my head, keep your guard up, you're going to F this old dude up if you have to. That was one terrifying visit I'll never forget. It's also the only time I didn't shake a customer's hand as I was leaving. My hand still tingles when I think about the introductory handshake and all those clear tubs filled with used tissues. Well, words are failing the narrator. My God. What do you even say or do in that sort of situation? I only wonder what the inheritor or buyer of that house had to do with the thousands of dollars worth of <clears throat> equipment. Anyway, on to our last few stories. Not a realtor happened to some friends who brought a property. Very old site, about 300 years old, which had been part of a convent, the living area of the nuns specifically. The aforementioned place had been refurbished as small apartments and houses about 50 years ago. They went to live there and there was some maintenance given to certain places of the property, the common areas. There was a wall which was slightly wider than the others. They began to give maintenance to that wall, but the outer layer fell apart due to the rain and old age. While trying to fix that, they found dozens of skeletons of babies, very little babies, and very old little skeletons. Well, authorities and historians came and went by, and they came to the conclusion that the nuns tossed their babies there right after giving birth to them. God knows if they were alive or dead by then. Not unheard of, old religious orders were very strict about that, and then there were even more gruesome policies regarding nuns' pregnancies. My uncle bought a caravan down the coast on a well-known beach. Just prior to selling it, police detectives turned up and turned the place upside down and inside out, looking for some sort of information. Turns out the family of one of Australia's most notorious serial killers used to own the caravan many years ago. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories, or if you want some vibey music to put on in the background, check out Easy Mode. If you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot. Everything linked in the description.